Hello, this is Susan from Wild Cottage, except I'm not at Wild Cottage at the minute. Do you hear the birds all taken off from the trees behind me? Um, I look tired because I am, because, yeah, we traveled down to Kilkenny, and uh, we're at Susanna's, and which is also known as Black Sheep Farm, where she raises the Svartblast sheep for yarn and blankets. And um, yeah, we're coming to, me and Tom are here to help Susanna out with the farm for a week or so. She's recovering from an operation, so we're just helping her with things because there's a lot of things she can't be doing. She's not allowed. It's really important that she doesn't hurt herself as her body recovers. Um, I brought loads of knitting projects, of course. Uh, going to help out a friend at her farm for a week. And how many of you can relate? Probably lots of you. Orange bag, clothes for a week. This set, projects for a week. Spinning wheel, knitting. Stephen West, of course, because cast on. First mystery clue is going to be while I'm there. Have to bring all my needles in case, in case. And then other projects. Yeah, you know yourself. Need bring my knitting naughty and my nasta pen in case I need to ride, wind something double pull. Mm hmm Yeah. Definitely more in the crafting section than in the clothes section. <laughs> But I finished objects. I didn't bring them because I yeah, couldn't bring all the things because we stopped at a plant nursery to bring our plants as well. So, But I will announce the winner of the giveaway. And this is Oven Mitt. And he wants me to pay attention to him. Oven Mitt is now the, the shepherd cat. He helps shepherd the sheep around now that Bodacious, well, Bodacious, the original cat shepherd, the shepherd of sheep. That not well sleepy. Um, yeah. Okay. Pay attention to the kitty. Pay attention to the kitty. Yeah. So Bodacious was the original cat who was a shepherd of the sheep. He was brilliant, but he he, he died a few years ago. And Oven Mitt was his apprentice, and now Oven Mitt has taken over. He's not quite as good as at shepherding, but he is much more affectionate. He's a love bug where Bodacious was not. He wouldn't let most people touch him. He, I would be able to pet him and Tom because he was, you know, familiar with us. But he was, he was a great character. And there's a book about him. He wrote, he wrote a book called Bodacious the Shepherd Cat. Yes, it's very good. And it's probably, you can probably get it. I mean, I don't know if it's still on the shelves on, Am on your local bookshop. But you might be able to order it. And it's probably on Amazon. I think there's Kindle as well. So... What you doing? Okay, this is kind of awkward. Yeah, he's kind of awkward. I'm squatting down with the kitty. It's a funny position. I've been knitting like a banshee, trying to get my projects finished before the Stephen West MCAL starts on the 6th. So we'll see. I don't want to hurt my hand. So, okay, let's go in. Let's finish our coffee. It's probably cold now. Okay, we'll talk to you later. To feed the boys back here in the not me <laughs> not that boy the the ram boys they're up through the other yeah, side into the main food. orchard but uh we get their food ready and then we'll call them call the boys how do you call the sheep hey boys Bye boys don't know if whistling works Apples. My boys. Come on. My boys. Look at all the apples. Here they come. Here they come. My boys. Realization registered. Yeah. Big ears is in there, but uh, he's grown into his ears, so we don't know. It's hard. He's hard to spot when they're running because he doesn't stand out anymore. My come boys. On. Come on. All right, off you go. You know where it is. Hello? Yeah. 
Isn't that camera shy? Oh, I see. Tastes better this end, does it? Right. I just see butts. I think that's him anyways. Hey, Whoop! Big spot here. Oh, this might be bigger. Okay. Yeah, that's good here. right there. Woke up when I came out of the cottage. Oven mitt. Hello oven mitt. Were you waiting for me to get out? Hey kitty kitty. Okay put down the, the phone and pet me. And look at the tansy herb. That's fever few I think grow. It's so it's oh oven mitt is bumping me. I just love how this stuff. <laughs> Pay attention to the kitty cat. Yeah kitty cat. I thought I just bring you into the back garden here at Susanna's black sheep farm where she raises the Svarplas sheep. She's got so many lovely flowers and on the way here we picked, we stopped at the Care Hurley nursery and fulfilled the order which I've put into this wheelbarrow. So yeah, so mit mit. yeah later we'll go feed the sheep. The smell of apples. Oh, there's a little blue tip. Let's see, can we? It's in there in the, well, now it's flown off. The smell of apples is so strong because, let me zoom back out again. This is just apples and pears everywhere. And a lot of, I mean, there are just so many, and down that way as well. And it's just early morning, the air is still, and the smell of apples is enormous and incredible and wonderful. So, yeah. So, I've drawn the winner for the first week's prize for the Curio Stitches Knit Along and uh, I'll go I'll tell that name a little bit later so, but I don't think I'll I'm not sure I'll be doing a regular podcast knitting podcast this week so look at, ooh, look at that one I think the variety of, this is a dahlia I think that variety might be Rasmataz. It's blowing out a bit because it's so bright. That's lovely, isn't it, oven mitt? Yeah. Susanna loves dahlias. I do as well. I have so many dahlias. Yeah. Can you hear, can you hear the mitt mitt purring away? What's she doing? Look at these colors. In the spring, when I was here lambing, we went on a shopping trip to one of the garden centers and we got a bunch of dahlias. And you can see Susanna's here and we got a little miniature dahlia called Inca, because Susanna has a little dog named Inca. And we both got one. And um, I don't see it here at the minute. It might be somewhere else in the garden. Because it's only it's only little, like Inca herself, Inca Dink Do. That's the little, tiny, tiny little Jack Russell kind of. She's the world's smallest sheepdog, and she's going to be in a TV show, or in a, yeah, well, it was going to be on Irish television. I think tomorrow. The premiere, the premiere. Ooh, I think I see a big pumpkin. Let's walk over. I do. I do see. Oh, look at that. Ooh, that's lovely. And look in there. Can't get through there at the minute. Oh, there's the sweet corn. And I found a sweet corn variety called Bodacious. And that was the late uh, shepherd cat, Bodacious. He was a great cat. So I gave that corn to Suzanne and that's it. The sweet corn variety, Bodacious, which doesn't... Oh, there's a cob down. Oh, it did make cobs. 
See, it's got some cobs. Ooh. So yeah. Look at her weather vane with the wise old crow on it. It's like a scarecrow. I'm sure it's to be used as a scarecrow in here. Ooh, I really like that. That's pretty cool. Lovely blue sky at the moment. Not just some of the apples I was talking about. That definitely looks like the Bram, excuse me, a Bramley's, which is a cooking apple. Yeah, these trees are old. Her, her great-grandfather, I think it was, planted a lot of them. And this one is probably from her grandfather, but hold on, let me show you. So if you know, if you're a gardener, you'll know that this is an Espaillé apple. And it's very old. I'm sure this was her great-grandfather, if not her great-great-grandfather. I think it was the great-grandfather planted these and trained them. And the smell of apples, especially right here. Robin is following me around. Can you hear them singing? There he is in the pear tree. He's, just, he's going ahead of me to see if I kick up any insects. So there's a little pear tree. You can see it's older and it's kind of on its last legs. But And there's a, up there more pears. Look at that. And then her grandfather... It's not grafted. He pollinated an apple and a pear together and made a papal. And the papal tree's down there. And it's a really yummy fruit. So I want to get a graft of that tree at some point to try in the cottage. See, there's one hanging. Hello, blue tit. Oh, I just saw the blue tit. That's the robin singing. Can't, I don't know why I'm trying to show you. You can't see it. But this is a papal. It, it really is not a pear. It kind of looks like a pear. But it isn't. Oh! I stepped on oven mitt. I'm sorry, kitty. And you can see the way it was trained. Everybody is singing. Yep. Alrighty. What are you doing? Don't smush the plants I just got for Susanna. Yeah. It's a good balancing act. Aren't you clever? Aren't you clever, kitty? Hello. Here they come. Here come the ewes. We put out their food. Stragglers. <laughs> <laughs> Perfecto. Anyways, I'm out here to finish writing my article um, for Roots and Stitches, which is a wonderful new online crafting um, community space with uh, from Cat of Heather and Hops and Meredith of Mary makes I've got that wrong I put it on the screen so yeah so Kat contacted me asked if I'd like to write an article and I would so I'm rusty with writing but yeah so I'm putting together a little article for her about how I garden with nature in the natural dyes garden well and I garden with nature in all the gardens but focusing on the natural guy dye garden so yeah, we'll see how that goes and see how they like the first draft and, you know, what way they'd like me to tweak or whatever. So I'm finishing it up here in Susanna's garden. I am at, not Wild Cottage, I'm still here at uh, the Black Sheep Farm helping my friend. This is my ghost knitter shawl by Amber O'Brien. And this isn't a proper podcast, so I won't talk a lot about it. But this is the, the hand-dyed yarn from Island... Uh, blah, blah, finely fibers here in Ireland and then this is some thrifted 
yarn called Maple Leaves that I got. And you can see here, it's upside down, it's probably hard to see, but I'm just, I've got about 20 rows to go and I'm just doing the skulls motif, motif um, the, for the Ghost Knitter Shawl by Ambo O'Brien for Halloween. So I've got the skull eyes and the nostrils. and So yeah, I'm nearly done with that and I'm hoping to have that done in time to have my needles cleared of any shawls for the MCAL. We'll just pop over here quickly. So I have my MCAL yarns in here, which you've seen before. So I'll ball those up. Might get ta Tom to ball those up. He'll be here for a little bit longer and then he's got to go back home. And then my Abracadabra yarns from Irish Diarbera Yarns Design that I got in the Abracadabra colorway here, my ranunculus. Um, so I'm working down the body, so that's it's kind of looking funny, the color, because I'm in sore outside and the lighting's not super great. But yeah, so I did the, the yoke in the mohair by itself, and I'm doing the body in just the uh, beautiful 100% merino fingering weight. And then with, for the long sleeves, I'm going to see what I have left. I'm imagining it'll be um, just the, whatchamacallit, merino also i have been spinning and um yeah so that's kind of a halloweeny colorway but under there there are some pinks that were kind of like this this kind of purpley so i've been spinning it bit by bit so we'll see what it ends up like when i take it off i'll probably apply it on itself but i just have a few of that colorway left i brought some other colorways um to spin as well this is my friend Catherine's new book that got published, and um, I wasn't able to go to her book launch, unfortunately, um, but Susanna picked up the book for me, so I'm excited to read that. And then I've already saved some seeds from Susanna's garden. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so that's just a quick little look at my knitting. I have my casting or not my casting, my rune mitts, my El has room mitts from Curio Stitches Project in here. So I'm going to start back working on that some more once I finish that ghost knitter shawl. I just really want to get that off the needles. And then I can, you know, work on this little project with the beads, uh, even during the MCAL, I'm thinking. So yeah, so excited about that. I also have some other things that I brought in here. If I need to cast on another project, but I'm sure I'll show you that in a proper knitting podcast. So, alrighty. Oh, look, I should also show you. You probably saw it on me, or you will see it on me. I finished the jumper for Tom, by, which is the test knit I'm doing of the Drop Dead Freddy jumper by Cat of Heather and Hops. It's so lovely. I'm really happy with it. It's got eye cord edging. Um on the bottom. No, I didn't do it on the bottom. That's right. Cause I was not sure if I was going to extend that or not, but I did it on the sleeves. I didn't do it on the collar. Cause when I first did the collar, it was a bit too tight for Tom because I think I got tighter sometimes as I was knitting, but also I think he might have a big head. So when I just did it back, uh, I just did a regular cast off until it will see how it was. And then unfortunately what happened was when I had met, the last time I measured Tom, his chest was a 39 or something, but he's been doing so much building work this summer that he got bigger and his biceps got bigger. So he gained an inch and a half on his chest and I don't know what on his biceps. So this jumper fit him, it fit him really good as a vest. He loved it as a vest. But when I put on the sleeves, I mean, it looked fine, but he just felt like it was tighter than he would like, especially with his sensory sensitivity. So I get to have it. <laughs> so <laughs> not too upset about that. Yeah, so if I knit this again, I'll knit him a size up, and I just have to remember that he is a size up now. So, yeah, I should have. I never. I mean, we didn't think he was getting that much more muscular, but he did. So, you know, we won't complain about that. So, yeah, and the, again, the colors are blown out, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's so soft. There's a lot of, with the pattern, 
there's a lot of modifications you can make and she explains and she's going to have a support video as well how to put drop stitches in different places wherever you want well I didn't do that and also it has like a longer back hem and all that you can do and again I didn't do that because I was doing it for Tom and then you know the striping you can do the stripes or not do the stripes you can do the stripes whatever different sizes her sample that she did has got thinner stripes I did wider stripes um Ruth from the Knitting Hobbit podcast didn't do any stripes she kind of just did you know a yarn that had kind of a fade sort of thing going on so yeah definitely check out this pattern it, it I think it's coming out sometime this month of October yeah and the working title is the drop dead freddy jumper okay so just want to real quickly um announce the winner of the first week's prize of the curio stitches knit along the curio stitches cal which we are holding on instagram until the 31st of december and also via email so all you have to it's just whips are allowed you don't have to finish and we are drawing weekly prizes this first week's prize was winner was Jean Burby and I put a little picture up here um, of what she's working on she's working on the wolf moon hat and we are alternating which of the, it's either me or Carrie from my wool mitten or Ellie of curio stitches is giving away the prize each week so we're alternating and this week I'm giving the prize away and I have chosen to give the rune casting collection of Ellie's, Ellie Willis Curio Stitches, that has just been released. It's an ebook, so it has all the rune casting patterns. Plus, in the ebook, she has made dog or animal coats out of the rune past patterns as well. And the sizes, there are 15 sizes from like a little, like a pet rat, right on up to a large dog. So that's pretty amazing. So Jean, you have won that prize and I have uh, bought it for you on Ravelry. So check your Ravel Ravelry account and I've also sent you an email. So yeah, keep entering everyone, you know, a prize every week and then there'll be a bigger grand prize at the end. And yeah, so it's for any Curio Stitches pattern and they are available on Ravelry and on her own website, curiostitches.com. Use the hashtag Curio Stitches Cow on Instagram. And yeah, so yay! And also the prizes that I gave away for my color work celebration, I have um, the patterns that you picked and the winners I announced last week, there were four winners. I have purchased all your patterns on Ravelry and sent you an email via Ravelry. If for some reason you haven't gotten that email because I've just been so busy, I you know, sent you a message via there, but not via regular email. So if for some reason you haven't got it, um, do let me know so that, you know, go check your Ravelry. Or if it's just email, Ravelry should have sent you an email that your pattern prize is there. So, okay. And I have a few physical prizes that I'll be giving away, you know, at different points in the giveaway, uh, Curio Stitches Cow, and I'll show you them later because I don't have them with me so I'll show you later in the month when I finally get home to Wild Cottage. Okay friends I hope this little update was okay for you and I hope you're keeping as well as you can and we will talk to you soon. I'll talk to you soon. Who knows I'll probably put up some more sheep videos later on and this week or next.